Last time I talked to you, I said, uh, we're going to be drilling by the time I get back. And of course, guess what? We haven't got our last permit yet. So I want to get that out of the way first. So as I sit here talking to you, everything good is in front of us. All the excitement of green fields, exploration, discovery, all of that stuff is yet to come. So I'll tell you that I really think Gwen is right about this gold market. We're in a long-term bull market. My personal view is if it's below 1100 bucks, we all go home. When it goes over 14 and a quarter, it's going to be euphoria. So in the meantime, it's kind of drudgery. We're, we're kind of having to work pretty hard to make things happen. But we are making things happen. The markets have improved. <coughs> we had that little breather last year. We had about six months where we could actually raise some money, notwithstanding what's happening with the majors. But the, the investing public actually has come out of the woodwork a bit, and they're starting to finance even us explorers. And when I say even us explorers, we are at the bottom of the food chain. Playfair mining is at the bottom of the food chain. And just to, to say how far down we were when we started, this idea started as an idea up at Delray in, in uh, Northern Ireland. So green fields is a two-edged sword. Number one, it's risky, okay? But number two, if we win, we are going to win large because we have a whole district tied up. We have two locations, 11 kilometers apart, with good indications that gold exists. We have a drill program that's already demonstrated that. So I'm just going to give you some background on, uh, on Ireland. Okay, why Ireland? Why, well, I told you why Greenfield. It, it's a chance for the big win. But Ireland is something special. No one has been looking for gold in Ireland. Everybody walks up to the booth, gold in Ireland can't believe it. It started about 30 years ago with Richard Conroy, maybe 35 years ago, 1985, 87. There was a discovery in Scotland called Conanish. And it was on a major structure, and that structure comes through the North Sea, and Richard Conroy thought, well, it comes through here, we got the same type of rocks, why not start looking in, in Ireland? And in fact, that's what kicked it off back then. Delradian, the Curinio deposit, has, has come out as a five million ounce give or take uh, deposit is being put into production by Del Radian. They're working hard at it. They've, they've got a high grade. It's over 10 ounces to the ton. And uh, it's uh, at five million ounces, it's a significant deposit within the world. This structure continues on through Ireland out into the Atlantic, the big structure. Curnew is on a splay. So the two guys that I'm dealing with in, in uh, Ireland, Rick, uh, Rick, uh, uh, Parker and Andy Bowden. Andy Bowden has, has lived in Ireland for 40 years. Rick Parker's worked all over the world. He is the man that founded the Conanish deposit in Scotland. So he helped kick this off. Six and a half years ago, Rick and Andy were standing up at the, at the Curnio deposit, commiserated, decided where, where else in Ireland could we find something like this? The Ox Mountains. And the Ox Mountains are uh, uh, down in the Republic of Ireland. So off the idea of, of where might they find another one? They said about prospecting. Now, prospecting is boots on the ground. The, the computer algorithms don't work. The, the gathering of information doesn't work. If you don't go on the ground, you don't find anything. So they went to this area that had not been prospected other than by one company back about in the 1980s called Newmont. They went through the area, didn't find anything of interest. So this is the big picture. You picture this uh, st structure coming down through, starting up in Scotland. They call it, uh, there's different names for it along the line. It comes down, you can see uh, Curinio deposit up at the top. Cabanacaw, that's owned by Galantis. He, and you've all heard the last week the headaches that Galantis had. Just because Ireland is number one jurisdiction in the world uh, for three years running up until this year is still in the top 10, doesn't mean to say we don't have all the issues that we have for explorationists and mining guys. We, we, we always have to jump through hoops and, and, and wedges and and bog in order to get our job done. So uh, Cabanacaw was uh, just put on hold uh, as a result of some of this stuff. We are down in the Ox Mountains, down, down where the little red dot is there. That's where we're, we're uh, concentrated. So once Andy and Rick uh, got the ground together, did their prospecting, came up with two areas of float. Uh, <coughs> one was in uh, Clunicool, one was in Cabra. These, this float uh, ran up to 33 grams at, at Cabra and up to about 24 grams at Clunicool. And, and they had encouragement to keep going. They didn't have any backers. They finally made a deal with us uh, being Playfair at the Prospectors a couple years back. 
is about actually about four years ago. And it, the tie was between Andy, uh, between Rick Parker and Neil Briggs, who is our, our geologist. They worked for Falconbridge Nickel back in the day. And through that connect, we ended up financing these guys. We trusted them. So we fast forward a little bit. We couldn't raise money uh, to do anything big, but I raised enough money to cons consummate the deal, and it was all raised from good mining guys, uh, the likes of Tom Skimming and uh, Mac Watson and uh, uh, Gren Thomas and uh, Tukey Angus. It, all, it was mining guys that put up the, the money for us to get this thing going. And the second time we did a financing, it was the same thing. It was mainly mining guys with a few outsides. So the, the guys that are looking at this project realize that this upside is there. It's for real. The upside is for real. So, here we stand. How much time do I have, Gwen? Four minutes. Four minutes. Okay, we have this beautiful discovery of a structure. Now, I don't know if you guys believe in structures, but I do. I, I lived in Red Lake. I lived in Kirkland Lake. Structures are important when it comes to gold. And I know that up in Kirkland Lake, you can drill holes all the way through the structure in numerous spots and get nothing. And I also know that Kirkland Lake's produced 45 million ounces, give or take a little bit. Red Lake, the same thing. Timmins, the same thing. Structural control in these gold environments is really important. So what we ended up doing, in the areas of the, of the uh, float, uh, we were lucky that the government of Ireland, keep in mind we're broke, okay, we don't have a lot of money, government of Ireland did a geophysical uh, uh, a survey, and out of that survey came this, th this particular uh, expression. We didn't know what it really meant, but we assumed it was a structure. There's some geological reasons to, to think we were right about that. The area of the red, the big red circle there, is the area where all this float was. So last year, we took our best shot, we went up to that locale, drilled nine holes. And as we drill, we, we learn. Keep in mind, we're the first guys ever to drill. There's no drill hole within 50 miles of here. So we had no idea what we we're going to get into. There was a small vein that we started with, just to follow the vein from down below up into the structure. So keeping in mind, as we drilled the first hole, we realize a significant difference. Curinho is a narrow vein and, and very clearly the, the vein ends the mineralization. What we ended up with was a, a, a bunch of alteration. So we see this alteration, so we know we're in a different kind of environment. But we really don't know what. The rock looks so good, okay? It turns out, after drilling nine holes, some of the best looking gold bearing potential that we've seen, we all got fooled a bit, all the, all the drill holes had over a gram, as high as seven and a half grams over narrow widths, not of economic consequence. But for me, as a guy that's lived in Red Lake and Kirkland Lake and knowing how difficult it is to come up with a series of nine holes, all having gold in a brand new structure on a brand new place on the planet that's never had gold before, if you calculated the odds, if there's a statistician here who wants to calculate the odds, they're astronomical against us. And that's what happened. So our, our belief that this structure is worthy of a lot of money to be spent to try and figure out what might be there is, is where we're at. What did we do, Gwen? I have no idea how you did that. Come back and help. I'm pretty sure, there we go. He's on it. Okay. <laughs> okay, here's, here's our nine holes, okay? Not to bore you, you can't read the numbers. But th this is just the stuff over a gram. The stuff in yellow is over three grams. So it's, it's, it's significant. And this is what it looks like. For the geologists in the crowd, I see a, a few well-known geologists sitting out here. Uh, it looks like a good home for gold. The interesting thing about this structure, I can't go backwards there, is that it's, there's a graphitic zone up the middle of the structure. There's no gold in the graphite but it does track the structure. We have gold north of the graphite and we have gold south of the graphite. So we consider that a really important factor that, that, this, that this graphite is showing us where that structure is. It's four and a half kilometers long. So our next part of the program, come on, okay, is to go back up there and do a fence of holes. Now, if you see that little blue square, that's where we drilled last year. These other holes are 200 meter holes laid out along the length of the structure to test the structure, to try and figure out whether there's going to be anything of economic consequence in this structure. It's wide open. If we win, okay, we're going to win large because this is an orogenic uh, structure. The, the, the alteration tells us that this, whatever is there is going to go to depth, 
Okay, we have no idea what might be in the last three and a half kilometers of the structure because there's no, there's no float, there's no exposure, there's no nothing. So the con this concentrates on that one and a half kilometers. And all I can say, if you're a shareholder, wish us well. If you're not, it's time to gamble, okay? Uh, all my time. You're done. I'm done? Well, there's a good, uh, we're, and incidentally, we, <laughs> we have a booth, uh, Playfair Mining out front. You can drop around and see us. Neil Briggs will be here tomorrow afternoon for the geologists that want to get some more detail. Thank you very much.